Humans have always been fascinated with their place in the universe. From our perspective, it appears as if the sun and the stars revolve around us. And for most of human history, it was thought that the Earth sits at the center of the universe. Four centuries ago, however, the Earth lost this prized position when it was discovered that the Earth orbits the sun and not the other way around. In the century that followed this discovery, great progress was made in understanding the structure of the solar system. And by the 18th century, models such as this were being made in order to communicate these discoveries. This is an early form of planetarium known as an orrery. It gets its name from the Earl of Orrery, who owned one of the earliest examples of these machines. When this handle is turned, an intricate geared mechanism causes the planets to rotate around the sun. Each planet moves at its own speed according to the mass and distance from the sun of the actual planet. These planets are not to scale, however, as it would be impossible to represent the vast differences between them on a model of this size. If this model were to scale with reference to the Sun, the Earth would be less than a tenth of a millimetre and would be positioned over 10 metres away, while Uranus would be positioned over 200 metres away. In the centre of the model we have the Sun, then Mercury, Venus, Earth with its moon, Mars, Jupiter with its moons, Saturn with its ring and moons, and finally Uranus with its moons. Neptune is absent, however, as it had not yet been discovered in the 18th century when this model was built. During the 18th century, orreries became very popular and were used for both teaching purposes and, for those who could afford them, for recreation in the home. Their popularity was fueled in part by an enthusiasm for the work of Sir Isaac Newton, whose theory of gravity had provided an explanation for the orbits of the planets. There was an even greater surge in popularity in 1781 when Uranus was discovered by William Herschel. This particular orrery comes with other attachments which can be used to illustrate the movement of the moon and the earth and to demonstrate different kinds of eclipse. And a second attachment which can be used to illustrate the revolution and rotation of the earth and to demonstrate the changes in the seasons. To the people of the 18th century, these models would have been used to convey the relatively new mechanistic explanations as to the movements of the planets. But they also would have inspired a sense of awe at our precarious position in this clockwork universe.